there is this one veteran I keep remembering when I first met him. Aaron, our photographer, and was setting up all his equipment outside. And I remember the staff was rolling him out of the, his nursing home in his wheelchair. The first thing I saw was his face and he was just so happy, like smiling. I even remember one time Aaron was like, oh, could you make a serious face for one of the, the pictures? And he was like so confused. He didn't know what that meant. And so <laughs> he ended up making like a funny face because he didn't really know what a serious face was. Yeah, I'm Jaina. Do you remember me? I came to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice to see you. Hi, I'm Jaina Omai. I am a staff writer at Honolulu Magazine. This is Aaron. Hi, I'm Aaron. Nice to meet you. He'll be taking pictures of you today. Hi, uh, my name is Aaron Yoshino. I'm a staff photographer at Pacific Basin Communications. I remember there was a one night where my editor, Krista Young, she asked me if I wanted to do a story on the second generation Japanese American soldiers of World War II, or the, they're called Nisei veterans. And I was totally 100% in. She had just read a, another obituary about one of the veterans passing away in the mainland. And she noticed that a lot of the coverage and the stories about these veterans were only about their service. Like their stories kind of ended with their service. Um, and she was interested and I was interested as well about knowing, you know, what happened after they came home to Hawaii. For me, it was really a learning process. You know, I spent my whole life, as far as I can remember, learning about the 442nd and learning about what they did um, when they served. But then there was this huge gap, like it's almost like they ceased to exist after 1945. So it was really interesting to kind of drop in on all of these veterans' lives for a little while um, and get to see where, where they were, where they ended up. Um, you know, a lot of them, we know many of them came home and they got married. They, some of them went to college in the mainland through the GI Bill. They raised kids, they built careers. And so those are the stories we wanted to, to find. And just to get to know the veterans as people. And even though their service and their, all of the, the medals and the honors that they've earned is, is really important. Uh, I think that the stories of what they did when they came home after they survived the war were just as important. Yeah, but it happens oh. so fast you don't notice. Oh, when you take the picture, you don't Yeah. There's a, it's wireless, so there's a radio here. And it makes it go off. Big smile. Smile. Good. So I started in May just looking around, meeting with a bunch of veterans advocates and groups. I visited nursing homes, even um, one of the nursing homes that my grandpa, who served um, in the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, he was actually, um, he actually lived at one of them for a few months. Most of them are in their 90s. Some of them are 100 years old and older. Um, many of them are in nursing homes and retirement communities. So. I was just praying we could find at least four or five. And after about four months of interviews and photo shoots, we were actually able to find uh, 17 of them. So we captured their pictures, shared their stories, and um, that's what made our, our actually the ni our 19 page feature, which we called Soldiering On. Who's did? I don't know. We don't know. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you did great. Wow. Here's the issue, the December <laughs> issue. Hmm. Look at this. Yeah, this was my grandpa's medal, the Congressional Gold Medal that we actually brought to um, look at for, I hadn't seen it for such a long time. One of the people that really kind of stood out was a uh, Hidenobu Hiyane. He was a uh, 100th Battalion. He's, I think, 101 years old. You know, he had this, I think he's a little hard of hearing, but he had this, looked like a fire bell or a school bell, like hardwired into his phone line. So when the phone rings, you get this, like, it sounds like the house is burning down. There's like this huge fire alarm, like ding, 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 ding. And, you know, even back in his 
time when he was in the fourth corner of the hundredth, he had a, he called it a trench radio or a mess kit radio. It looks kind of like a shell. Um, and he, I don't know how, scavenged uh, electronic components on the battlefield and somehow managed to cobble together a working transistor radio that um, actually still worked. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it was just fascinating getting to see him in his home. And, and because it's a home he'd been in, I think since he moved back to Hawaii, um, you know, the walls were covered with family photos, memorabilia, collectibles, um, posters from 442nd events that he'd been to. Um, and again, you know, when we photographed him, we put him in front of all that. And we really wanted to kind of show him in that space. And, you know, I love those little details. I mean, you, you can't, you couldn't make it up. This man right here, uh, Reverend Fujitani or Yoshiaki Fujitani, uh, you guys, some of you might recognize him. He is the former bishop of Hopa Hongonji uh, Mission of Hawaii. Uh, but what's interesting is that he was in the military intelligence service. He served with my, my mom's uncle. Um, I actually didn't know this till recently, but my mom told me that uh, he married my parents and his dad, who was also a bishop, uh, married my grandparents. So it was really special when our art team actually picked him to be on the cover. I think it was such a striking photo and for anyone who knows him, like th this is totally, like you can just tell this is totally him and his personality, so. Okay, excellent. Very good. And maybe give me a little bit more of a smile for this. Smile, there you go. <laughs> Very good. And then maybe a little more serious one, Governor. Well, serious one. There we go. Excellent. Governor, I remember I told you my grandpa was in the 442. Yeah. Uh, Gail's uh, father. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, Aaron's grandpa was also in the 442. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So we have kind of like a personal connection uh -huh. to the story. Uh -huh. and yeah. yeah. I was MIS. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was approached about this story probably about four or five months ago um, by Jaina and, and by some members of our team who I think knew that I had a personal connection to the 442nd. My grandfather, uh, George Yoshino, was in K Company. Um, in the 442nd and uh, my whole family, uh, my father's actually also a veteran, he's a Vietnam veteran and I think because of my father and my grandfather's military service, or my father at least felt really like it was important to kind of preserve that legacy. The last time I was here it was actually the last time I saw my grandfather alive. Um, he was in hospice here and uh, it's a little bit of a reminder because Mr. Yeah. 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 Oh, was in the same company as my grandfather so, so it's a good reminder of him. A lot of emotions, but it's 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 good to be able to kind of remember him and remember the full forty second. I like your pin. <laughs> You're dead. Yeah, because you you played baseball, right? Yeah. And you coached. Baseball. Yeah. How I live. Yeah, yeah. At the top of the year. Yeah. 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 Most the most outstanding rookie in nineteen forty seven. Yeah. Did you? Really? Did uh, you? They gave me a gold watch. <laughs> Who gave you the pin? One of your sons. Huh? This pin. Yeah, this pin, yeah. Was it Earl or one of your sons? Yeah, I don't know where he got it, but <laughs> he, he put it on. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. It was very nice. I think we both really wanted to, you know, do this right and to really be respectful and honor the veterans in the way that they should be. I think that the whole process of you know, starting in May till when we um, sent this issue to the press till till actually, you know, now seeing it has been um, kind of overwhelming but rewarding at the same time. But to see it all in print, especially to see um, Reverend Fujitani on the front, um, I'm so happy that people can finally read their stories and. Um, understand that they made such a big impact in Hawaii and in our communities in their own way. And I was just so honored to, to be there with them and to spend time with them and their families. No need, 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 no need the powder, okay? Good. <laughs> yeah, no need the powder.